Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Dave Filoni and the Star Wars people just teased Ahsoka Season 2, The Mandalorian Season 4, The Grogu Movie, and confirmed that the Mortis Gods storyline from Ahsoka Season 1 will continue to be a big plot point, so we'll break it all down. We've also got some more details since my last video about what their actual plan is for how everything is supposed to fit together in the timeline. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Of course, I'll do episode videos for everything that they wind up releasing and videos for the movies that they wind up releasing now, too, that we just heard about. Probably the biggest news since my last big Star Wars video was Dave Filoni confirming a lot of our Mortis Gods theories from Ahsoka Season 1. Interesting, interesting, interesting. He just released a new piece of Ahsoka Season 2 concept art that he drew himself. This is a Dave Filoni original. He does this every once in a while. With Ahsoka and Sabine standing on the statues of the Mortis Gods on the Father's Finger, where we last saw Balin's skull in the Season 1 finale. The funny thing about this, too, is that after Dave Filoni released this teaser, a bunch of people did some fan art of someone pulling the finger. Like, pull my finger, but Mortis Gods Star Wars style. But the teaser confirms a couple big things. Ahsoka and Sabine will eventually make their way to the Mortis Gods statues. The Mortis Gods will figure heavily into the Season 2 plot, at least, if not future plot beyond Season 2. Like, it might also spill into what's happening during the Thrawn movie. And we'll probably get to see a version of the Mortis Gods in live action. There are a couple ways they could accomplish that, like either more flashbacks, like live action Clone Wars flashbacks with young Ahsoka coming back, Hayden Christensen coming back as the younger version of Anakin Skywalker. And they could literally just do live action flashbacks to the Mortis episodes from Clone Wars, like they did Clone Wars flashbacks during Season 1. Same thing, but just during the events of the Mortis episodes. Or they could just somehow do live-action Mortis Gods in present day somehow. Dave Filoni would have to change some of the backstory a little bit because they made it seem like the sun died during the events of the Clone Wars Mortis episodes. But either way, it is super weird and super cool that Dave Filoni is bringing them into live-action is more than just a teaser that goes nowhere. Like, he did say that they would pay off this Balin Skull storyline with the Mortis Gods somehow. Back in the day when they were actually making those Mortis episodes of Clone Wars, Dave Filoni said that it was actually George Lucas himself who came up with the idea for Mortis Gods. He said that he wanted to introduce Force Gods into the Star Wars universe. The story that George laid out for us was something that I think that, that we'd all, as, as Star Wars fans, as, as lovers of mythology, wanted to delve into for a very long time, which was a much more intensive look at the Force and, and force wielders and, and how that's used and this whole prophecy of the chosen one and what does that mean? Are you the one? Uh, the one what? I was actually out of the room for the first, I think, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of George's pitch of these force wielders and I remember coming back in the room and the writers were all just kind of wrapped up like looking at George and they saw me come in the room and they looked at me and they're like, you got to hear this. And George sat me down and he started explaining to you that he's God and they wield the force, they're much more powerful than any Jedi Knight. And this one turns into a gargoyle and this one can turn into a griffin. <laughs> he's just saying all this stuff. On your feet. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty intense. Some of the weirdest ideas that they came up with during the Clone Wars, like the really cool lore, the backstory, just about the Force in general, the characters, George Lucas came up with that himself and then basically brought it to the table and was like, look, we need to introduce this. Let's find a way to do that. Now Dave Filoni is slowly bringing all that stuff into live action. The last we saw of them, Balin Skull was standing on the Father's Fist, pointing at a beacon in the distance in the mountains. It almost looked like it was a lava flow erupting from a mountain but it was meant to look as if the statue of the Mortis Gods had been built by the ancient witch kingdom of the Dathmiri at their height before the fall of their empire, and the father was meant to be pointing at a special temple on that Peridia planet that was a locus of power in the Force, like some powerful place in the Force. That's probably the power that Balin's skull had been feeling calling to him since they arrived at the planet, the power that Shin Ha-Ti had not felt, like I don't know what you're talking about when he kept telling her about it. There have been a lot of theories about who the villain of Ahsoka Season 2 could be, if not Balin Skull himself. Like, logically, it would be him. But because Ray Stevenson passed away last year, may he rest in peace, Dave Filoni said they pay the storyline off, but he didn't say whether or not they would actually just straight up recast the Balin Skull role. Or if they just give that storyline to Shin Ha T, or just continue it through other characters. But what they can actually do now is they've already set this up, make Balin Skull responsible for freeing the Sun from Mortis, which was the whole storyline during the original Mortis episodes. It was the Sun trying to trick them, trick Anakin Skywalker, into releasing him into the main galaxy. 
During Ahsoka Season 2, they could reveal that the son survived somehow, like his essence lived on after Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka left Mortis, and he just stayed trapped there this whole time. Or in the same way that the Force Owl, Mirai, is an avatar of the daughter, like she contains some of the daughter's life force, so a piece of the daughter lives on in her. They could say it's the same situation with the son, where a piece of his essence lives on and escapes the Mortis realm because of Balin's skull. And either the son himself fully returns or his spirit just possesses some random person. And because of that, they can actually have Sam Witwer show up as a live action version of the son. The first actual Star Wars character that he played inside the actual Star Wars shows after Starkiller, because he was just a video game character, was the son for the Mortis episodes. He's talked a lot about this in the past, but he did that before he ever did the voice of Darth Maul. It started with this character called the Son of Mortis, who they were like, you want to do Clone Wars? I'm like, yeah, sure. And eventually I find out that you're like, no, you're playing the dark side of the force named the Sun, And we're, the audience is going to, it's going to dawn on them that this is actually the voice of the dark side. If you didn't see any of my Ahsoka videos or the Star Wars episodes from the other Disney Plus series that I did, Sam Witwer has had stealth cameos in almost every single Star Wars series so far, but he's either always had his face covered so you couldn't see that it was him, or he was just playing background voices so that you wouldn't know that it was him, like he was using a different voice, you wouldn't know it was him unless you saw the credits. People keep asking him, why have you not shown up in a Star Wars series? Like, you're a young person, you're a good actor, and you know your Star Wars. Like, you're so into this Star Wars universe. It's weird that you haven't shown up as a really big character on screen where we can all see your face. It's possible that Dave Filoni has just been saving him for a much bigger role down the road. Maybe a live-action version of The Sun. Just because if he showed up on The Mandalorian playing a random bounty hunter or one of the other Star Wars series, it'd be way harder for him to then come back as a much bigger character like The Sun. And The Sun is a way bigger, way more important character than some of the other random characters he could show up as. A lot of people are also asking about Starkiller too. He's talked about that, showing up as live action Starkiller. There are a couple problems with that. I'll talk about that in some of my other Ahsoka Star Wars videos in the future. Introducing Starkiller into the live action canon in present day right now just creates a couple wrinkles that they'd have to explain. It just makes things a little bit more complicated, but it's not completely out of the realm of possibilities. Now people will be like, no, 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 we don't want the sun. We want Starkiller to show up in live action. But if you think about it this way, they can also use the sun as a movie level villain if things pan out with the Mandalorian Grogu movie and the Thrawn movie. Reportedly, Lucasfilm is planning on doing a trilogy of movies in this Mandalorian part of the timeline if the Grogu movie does well. Then they'll greenlight that third movie. What they would probably do though, because they're already planning on doing the Thrawn movie no matter what, so there's already two movies. If the Grogu movie does well, they'll greenlight the third movie and change the ending that they had planned originally for the Thrawn movie and make it more of an Empire Strikes Back kind of downer ending cliffhanger. Right now it seems like the only really powerful force-wielding villains that are going to be in those upcoming movies will either be Shin Hati, and she's not that powerful yet, and they're kind of putting her in a redemption arc anyway would be the Night Sisters like Mother Clotho, her two sisters, and the other undead Night Sisters that they plan on raising. For sure, they will be villains in the upcoming series and movies, but it just seems like they'll introduce some other big force-wielding villain, and it seems like the Mortis Gods are a huge part of the Night Sisters' history with the ancient Witch Kingdom of Dathmir. They just make it seem like their race worshipped the Mortis Gods to their ruin, and it might have had something to do with the sun. There's this big backstory that the father told Anakin during the Mortis episodes about why he created the Mortis realm, this pocket dimension, in the first place. They were so powerful in the Force, they implied that they almost destroyed an entire galaxy. They could just say that that galaxy they almost destroyed happened to be the other Peridia galaxy, and that's why everything looks like it's in ruin. So it just makes sense that they're teasing all this Mortis Gods storyline with Balin's skull, trying to find the Mortis Gods, find their power, that it has something to do with the backstory of the ancient witch kingdom of the Dathmeri and the Night Sisters. So then why wouldn't you bring back the sun, or the essence of the sun, or a version of the sun, as one of the big villains of Ahsoka Season 2? Doing Sam Witwer as a live-action version of the sun would also be a way around having to recast the Balin Skull role. Like, if you're not going to be able to use him all season, you need another villain. It just makes sense that you use another character. That other character could be a version of the sun. Because I don't think that Thrawn is going to be the main villain of Ahsoka Season 2. I think she's going to be stuck in the Peridia Galaxy for most of the season. She might make it back to the main galaxy by the end of Ahsoka Season 2, but it wouldn't be till, like, the very end of the season. Let me know in the comments, what do you want them to do for the villain of Ahsoka Season 2? Do you want them to recast Balin's Skull, or do you want them to just use a live-action version of the sun? 
Introducing live action son would also be a reason to bring back Hayden Christensen in present day too because he's kind of taken over the role that the Mortis gods served, creating balance in the force the way that he exists right now in present day. That was what the father told him during the Mortis episodes, you are destined to replace us essentially. He's basically doing what they used to do but on a more cosmic scale. That's why we haven't seen him around so much because he's been busy balancing the entire universe in the force. Some other details we just got about the Mandalorian season four and what's happening with the other stuff too is that apparently the Mandalorian season four about ready to film supposedly it might only be six episodes long and what would have been the final two episodes might be turned into the theatrical Grogu movie with a much bigger budget. Either way, the Grogu movie is supposed to come out in 2026, then Ahsoka season two comes out, then the Thrawn movie, and if things go well, that next Mandoverse movie, like the third movie. Maybe another season of Ahsoka or the Mandalorian somewhere in between the Thrawn movie and the third movie if it does wind up happening. But either way, it does seem like the Mandalorian season four will be like the next Mandoverse thing to actually happen. And it will come before the Mandalorian Grogu movie. But you can see they basically prioritize all the Mandalorian, the Grogu stuff that's happening right now in the timeline before any of the other movies during other parts of the timeline. Doing the Mandoverse stuff first gives them time to get the new Jedi Order movie going. They're completely rewriting the script on that, so it's going to take a couple years before it comes out. And doing all the Mando Grogu movies first, like even the Thrawn movie, gives them time to wrap up Grogu's storyline in this part of the timeline if they want to then use an older version of Grogu as like the main character of Star Wars episodes 10, 11, and 12, whatever those wind up being, further forward in the timeline. And apparently the Rey New Jedi Order movie is not meant to be Star Wars episode 10. It's like something completely different off by itself. We'll probably get some more teasers pretty soon. There are a couple other live action Star Wars series that are happening this year. Of course, I'll do videos for all that stuff. Click here to learn about the really cool Cal Kestis Easter eggs during Ahsoka season one. There's a really cool connection and click here for my Deadpool 3 teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.